hi hello everyone so in today's video what we are going to see is formal verification uh, this is part one of my tutorial let's start into that so in this entire tutorial session we are going to use jasper gold tool uh, we will be moving uh, to jasper gold tool now and then in order to explain it but uh, in a simpler way of explaining you is i thought using a ppt so we'll start with the ppt so basically how we need to verify using a formal verification is the first method is property based verification property based verification is nothing but uh, uh, expression of a behavior uh, it's like for example let's say uh, here i have written an example here we are seeing example like if once a rec is given an act will come after three cycle delay uh, this behavior we can write in a simple expression. So how we can write it property rec act something I am writing and uh, if a rec is high then uh, this is an implication operator which states uh, if this left side is true then it will look into the right side. I am telling like after three cycle delay uh, act will be equal to equal to one tick b1 like this we are writing. So this is a very simple expression. Uh, so this is called a property so these properties in formal verification we can use it like assert assume and cover these three things i'll be explaining you shortly using uh, a design and an example but for now uh, we will continue with this ppt so simply what is assertion is Whenever I have an output signal of a design, then I will be writing assertion on it. Whenever I have an input signal on a design, in case if I need to use any constraints, then I will do uh, write assumption on those signals alone. Uh, we don't need to write assumption for all the signal, but in case if we if a particular input need an ass assumption, then we need to write it. Uh, then the last thing is cover statement where in order to check few uh, whether this is working or not we can write a cover expression and we can verify that so these are the three important things which you need to know in order to work in the formal verification and uh, how the methodology and the structure let's look into this so in general the formal verification will be like we will have a set of design file which is in the right side so we will have our SV, uh, RTL design file and those things we'll be having. We will be giving that into the compiler. Uh, those design files should be compilable file. Uh, JG will compile that and also we will write a TB engineer. We might write a set of SVA file where, where we will be using a bind statement and uh, we will write our assertion, assumption and covers all these things into this uh, SVA file and uh, we will give both these things to property checker if this property is passed then it will be a pass and in case if it fails then it will be called as fail or sex counter example in the uh, Jasper gold we will say so these uh, this is a basic methodology so basically we need to have a design file and we need to have a test bench file uh, so for today's video I'll be explaining you what is assert assume and covers using the just the design file uh, tomorrow the main objective is like to create uh, in the part 2 we will be creating a SVA TB file and we will be doing all these things so file structure as I discussed you uh, discussed with you earlier we might need three different kinds of files where is one is RTA design files and the second is SVA test bench file and the third is tickle file so this is like we can go step by step and use the uh, JG tool to click step by step but that is not what we in general use in the industry we will be having a tickle script where whether it may be uh, automated generate it it will we will have a separate script to, to generate the uh, tickle script or in some cases we will write from the scratch and we will use it so that is one thing and uh, what we need to remember before going into this design is 
there is one issue which people should remember is over constraining uh, i told you uh, there are three different types where assert assume and cover so assert is like we need to all we will check whether it is true or whether it does it have a sex or not but in assumes whatever i give to the input this will be considered by the true uh, tool as uh, correct things like uh, if i give uh, b is equal to 0 means then uh, throughout my entire design the tool will consider b is 0 only it it cannot it will not even uh, think whether b can go to 1 or 2 or 3 and all because in the assume we define assume b equal to 0 so tool will never test or never try to uh, break uh, whether uh, b will go to 1 or b will go to 2 those things it won't check so over constraining a model will be a problem uh, the reason is if we over constrain uh, let's say in the previous example i told b equal to 0 or b equal to uh, 1 2 and all it can't go so in case if there is a bug in the later stage then we might miss it so remember carefully or uh, use your assumptions very correctly that way you can avoid this over constraining issue uh, okay for today's example this is the fsm design which i took so it's a very simple FSM design where I have a init stage and from init to S0 if all this A, B, C, D is 0 then it will go here. From S0 to S1 it will go on B and then from S0 to uh, S2 it will be going on C, S2 to uh, S1 it will be going on B and uh, this side also it's going on A and A dash it's going to S3 and coming back to S2 like that. So what are the things to remember here is uh, FSM inputs are A, B, C, D and FSM either one of the input should be high for example uh, A, B, C or D uh, it's okay I should have written can be high only one of the input can be high so basically it's like a one heart number uh, a b c d can be a one not number or all a b c d should be zero uh, so this is the uh, input constraint what we have so this we need to we will be using this as an assumption when we are designing and uh, we can verify whether in uh, if my state is s zero and uh, i have a c is it going to s2 and my state is s zero and i have a b is it going to s1 uh, and like this we can check multiple variety of assertion we can write but for today's explanation purpose I don't write extensively um, I write very few assertion before going there uh, I had written uh, the basic design code uh, we can keep this for reference yeah so what we have written here means we just defined it in a typed of enum and we designed uh, defined the states uh, up and then I am declaring it in a register. I am just saying like current current state will be uh, my init state. If it is reset else my current state will be next state and then here I am mentioning next state will be always my current state. So then what I am going to do here is this is the uh, FSM state transition so if a uh, if not of a not of b not of c not of t means then it will go to s0 from init state from s0 it will go to b if uh, if b then it will go to s1 if c it will go to s2 uh, in the s1 state here it's like a deadlock which uh, tomorrow's video we will be furthermore decoding this design and we'll be writing multiple uh, uh, assertions so that time you will get to know but uh, here the design states the next state should be s1 because i'm writing like this and then from s2 it is going here and s3 it is going here so this is a basic uh, design code so let me come to the verification part uh, here if you see i have few embedded assertion embedded assertions are nothing but whenever a designer design is code 
uh, for example let's take a FIFO in case if you are thinking about FIFO uh, the designer will be specifying like full and empty condition and also whether it is overflowing or underflowing those conditions for that he will write few assertions in his design itself and he will give to the uh, TV person in many places it will happen so one such thing is called embedded assertion so here also we are uh, writing in the design itself we are checking uh, basically this is not embedded assertion but uh, just for this purpose I used like that and uh, here what are the constraint we need means uh, we need an input constraint as I told uh, because a b c d should be either less than 1 or it should be 0 uh, means it should be 1 or 0 uh, so I am just using like dollar count once a function in the uh, SVA so I am using like count once uh, a b c d should be either less than or equal to 1 this is one assumption ass uh, assumption and then uh, I'm writing for a just to show uh, how assertion is used. I'm writing here one assertion. And this is one cover property. As the objective of this today's video is to just to show you how to write assumption, assertion and cover property. I'm just writing one assertion and one cover property. Uh, but in case if you want to test multiple different functionalities, you can free to test it but uh, here this is the way how to test it current state equal to equal to s0 and then b and uh, sorry guys so in case if you are feeling like you want to test more you can you are free to test it and here if you see current state equal to equal to s0 and then b and uh, in the next clock cycle current state will be s1 that's what this uh, property stating and here I wrote a cover statement stating like if my current state is S0 and then C uh, which is according to this diagram and then C then it will be in S2 that's what I am writing as a cover property now let's go there go here and check uh, how it is working so in order to run this I need uh, a tickle file this tickle file is nothing but uh, I, these are the basic commands where I will use like analyze uh, what I need to analyze means my deadlock fsm.sv file so I'm using sv12 deadlock fsm sv and then elaborate what I need to elaborate means I have a top module name which is fsm so top fsm create related covers precondition witness this I will explain while running the tool and we need to set what is the clock and what is the reset that's all these are the very these are just the five lines which you need and let's go to the tool here I'm rerunning the tickle file so once if you rerun uh, so yeah so these uh, are the very uh, basic things which you need to remember uh, in order to run this uh, how you can run means in case if your uh, university is having uh, something you just need to type jg whatever the tickle file name you are writing you need to write that uh, tickle file name and then you need to click and in order to open it a separate window uh, that will be the all like something like dot tickle file and and something like this we need to type that will be the all uh, so here let's run this entire design we are trying to prove the task and every task is proved and whatever the thing we had we have written here is very simple so it is proved so in my design i told you right uh, there, there should be an assumption which is a one heart number uh, let's clear out this assumption let's disable this assumption in case if we disable what is happening let's see in case if I disable this assumption and uh, prove the task here you can see an assertion is failing so why this is failing let's go and debug it so here if you see this assertion is expecting S0 and S1 because uh, in my assertion what I had written is I have written uh, this current state is S0 
uh, and the and next state should be s1 something like that I had written uh, but this really doesn't need to be true at all the time maybe uh, maybe some other inputs can come or uh, here if you see observe this it doesn't work in that way it is going from s0 to s2 uh, so b is also high maybe c might also be be high uh, because of that reason we can uh, see like add y signals if we add y signals we can see that from s0 it already decided to go to s2 so in the next state if we add y signals to this here you can see it's already the C is also high and the B is also high. So this create a race condition between the tool and maybe that has decided to go to S2. So this choose the path of S2. So assumptions are needed, but when and where we should not remember, you should not over constrain it. And uh, if, if we don't write an assumption in, in this case, right, this won't work because it should be either a one half number or it should be zero. But here both B and C is becoming high because of that reason my assertion is failing. So remember these kinds of inputs whenever needed you need to write assumption. Whatever the outputs we need to write assertion and uh, whichever like the cover properties in case if you want to write you can write here. The cover is there which is simply showing a transition is happening between S0 and S2. Uh, this is all which uh, today I planned to show. In case if you have any doubts, please uh, put a comment down. I'll be responding to that. And in this lecture, I am planning to continue every day formal verification. And probably uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm trying to uh, do every day like very small portion. Let's work on this. Thank you. We'll meet you in next video.